What is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. It is super, super windy out today, so it's gonna be a quick episode, but it's gonna be a very important episode because in our last episode, we talked about how sometimes loose soil is Mis, kind of misrepresented. A lot of people only aim for loose soil, but having loose soil does not mean that it's good quality soil and that it's going to be good to grow your plants in. And in that episode, we talked about how the ideal soil should really contain a little bit of sand, a little bit of clay, some organic material, and probably some silt. And we talked about how the ratio we look for is about 30% sand, 40% uh, clay, and then the remainder can be things like organic matter being about 20%, and then maybe clay be, or uh, silt being the remainder 10%. And in that video, a lot of you indicated that you have no clue how to test for those things. And so I thought, what a very good opportunity for me to teach you all something and also save you guys some money because you don't have to send a soil sample off to some uh, college extension office or agricultural extension spend 15, 20 bucks just to have them tell you, this is your percentage of sand, silt, and clay. So with that being said, the first thing you're gonna need is some water, you're gonna need a shovel, a ruler, a mason jar, and some soil, that's it. Now, if you're looking for how much nutrients is in your soil, that's gonna be for the next episode. We're gonna talk about how to do an at-home nutrient analysis in a future episode, but not today. Today, we're looking at just the overall structure of your soil, so that's gonna cover sand, silt, clay, and organic material. All right, now it's super important that when you're taking your samples, you don't sample from just one location. You wanna sample from multiple locations between four and six spots, so you have a good average because the soil in one spot might be different than another, but also you don't wanna sample just from the top of the soil because the top of the soil is gonna give you a false reading because uh, soil has a tendency to sort. It sorts uh, via particle size. The lighter, uh, smaller particles are gonna to come to the top, whereas the larger, heavier particles are gonna be down below. And and so you wanna have kind of a good mix of all of those. And so you wanna dig down about three to four inches in order to get the best sample size. So once you've done that, you're gonna put about two to three tablespoons per sample into your jar. You don't have to measure exactly because what you're gonna do at the end is you're gonna let it uh, settle out and then you're gonna measure it. So it doesn't really matter if you have two tablespoons, four tablespoons, as long as it fits in your jar, that's the big thing. All right, sorry, I'm battling the clouds moving in and out and the wind, it's kind of a crazy episode today. But we got our sample here and you'll see it's about, well, I can tell you, um, it filled the jar up about two inches, right? But that's all gonna change once we add the water anyway. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add the water. Now there's no particular amount of water you wanna add. The only exception, or the only thing you wanna make uh, sure of is that all the soil is covered up. So as long as all the soil is covered up, you know, I filled it up about three quarters of the way. You could fill it all the way up if you want. So once you've added your water, the next thing you wanna do is you want to shake it. You wanna shake it a lot. And by agitating it, what you're doing is you're suspending all of the stuff, all of the sand, the silt, the clay, the organic material. You're going to suspend all of that in the water. And then what you wanna do is you wanna let this sit for about 12 to 24 hours. Let it sit, don't touch it because you don't wanna disturb this because the idea is that you want the particles to naturally settle out because uh, what that does is it settles it out by what the composition is. So you'll notice that the sand will settle out first that's the heaviest and largest uh, particle size. So the sand is gonna settle out first, then the silt is gonna settle out uh, just after that. That's the, the medium sized particles. And then the top that's gonna settle out is the clay. And the clay is gonna be the top layer. You're gonna notice three different sections uh, in, your, in your jar here. And then anything floating on the top is your kind of your, your loose light uh, organic material that might not be completely broken down yet. So, uh, but you'll notice it looks like a really good chocolate milk right now. Um, it's very difficult to tell what the analysis is, but after it is all settled out, the water will be uh, slightly uh, you know, translucent. It'll be like, you know, you, you'll be able to see through it, but it's still gonna be kind of cloudy and, and foggy, but you'll be able to get an idea of the composition. The idea is really agitating it. Don't hesitate to use even a spoon and really mix that up and set this down. And then what you're going to do is after 12 to 24 hours, you're gonna take your ruler and you're gonna measure. You're gonna measure uh, the total sediment layers. There's gonna be three sediment layers. You don't have to worry about the stuff floating at the top. 
you're going to measure uh, the total sediment layer, all three together. Let's say you got to keep things, let's keep math very simple because I don't want to botch this on camera and confuse people. Let's say you had, uh, let's say you had two inches, right? Let's say you had two inches of sediment and let's say uh, the, the sand layer was a half an inch. So what you do is you simply divide the sand from the total and that's going to give you the percentage of sand. So that'd be 25% sand. Then you measure uh, and you measure the, you move the ruler up. You want to make sure that you move the ruler up to measure the, uh, the, the silt layer. And let's say the silt layer is a half an inch or a quarter inch, right? You measure, you take that amount and you divide it from the total still. That's going to give you your, your percentage of silt. And then you measure the clay and that's going to give you the percentage of the clay. You always want to divide the, uh, the segment from the total. And that's going to make sure that you know exactly what percentage you have. And then what you can do from there is you can uh, assess, okay, do I need to maybe add some sand to my soil? Um, or you could just add compost. Compost I call the universal fix-all because you're going to get a really good combination of all those things. But uh, you can also say, well, okay, maybe my soil is too sandy. How do I fix that? Well, if my soil is too sandy, add some compost. Um, or See if you can find some native topsoil, uh, have some topsoil brought in that has a little bit of clay. Sounds crazy to say, a lot of gardeners will never say bring in topsoil because it's usually fairly crappy, but it's usually fairly crappy because it sometimes has a decent amount of clay content in it. And so sometimes that's what you need. And so, uh, but by all means, compost first, I would say that. Add compost first because that's going to give you your nutrients as well as really good structure as well as homes for beneficial bacteria and fungi. You can never have too much compost, but sometimes compost is hard to come by. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> We're blown away. Sometimes compost is hard to come by or it's expensive. Uh, and so if either of those is the case, you can get by adding things like topsoil uh, to kind of to kind of amend the sand. So there's things that you can do, um, but by all means, this is the super simple way to do an at-home soil test. I highly recommend it. And even after like not even two minutes, you can already start to see, I don't know if you can start to see the layers forming, but you can start to see the sand down at the bottom. And I can already start to see some, some silt here, and I can already start to see a tiny bit of clay there. But uh, we will have a really good sample after about 12 hours. So don't touch it. Just uh, give it some time to settle out and uh, let, uh, let kind of gravity do the work. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. Remember to stay tuned for the next episode. We're going to talk about how to then take this sample. You're going to use this sample that you use from your soil test to, uh, or your soil analysis test to actually do an at-home nutrient test. And so I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. If you did, make sure to throw a like up there. Subscribe if you're not yet already. Share this video with a friend. I always appreciate it. And with that being said, as always, this is Luke from the Emma Gardener channel reminding you to grow big or go home. Do a soil test because it's very cheap and very simple and you don't have to pay 20 bucks to do it. And we'll catch you all on the next episode. All right, grow big or go home, everyone. Take care. Bye.